Hey guys and welcome to our Pi Game tutorial series here on Coder's Legacy. So if you're watching this, you probably already know what Pi Game is, but let me give you a brief recap anyway. So Pi Game is a gaming library, all right? It's a game library in Python that's available to us. It allows us to create simple games and especially 2D. Uh, 3D is technically possible, but it's something which Pi Game is not known for, not used for, and definitely not recommended for, all right? Uh, if you want to look at 3D options, then you have game engines, like proper game, fr game frameworks like Unreal Engine and Unity, all right? This, however, doesn't mean that Pygame doesn't have its own set of uses and advantages. You see, Pygame is actually pretty simple, okay? Anyone can get started in Pygame and actually begin creating simple games. You don't need to learn an entire framework or an entire software to learn how to make games, all right? Uh, with Pygame, it's just you need to know uh, some basic Python, and you just need to spend a little time learning Pygame, uh, learning how to use the Pygame functions and code itself. The another be another benefit is that with Pygame you get to learn all kinds of different game concepts. These game concepts are something you can carry forward into other gaming engines and libraries. Whether you're going into other gaming uh, li gaming libraries like SFML and C++ or SDL or if you're even going to Unity or Unreal later on, the concepts you learn in Pygame will actually help you out over there. These concepts are like carry-forward concepts. They teach you how, the, how games actually work. They teach you about the underlying concepts behind them, all right? And as someone who with experience in, with experience in Unity, Unreal, and SFML, and uh, Pygame, uh, I can tell you that these concepts actually really did help me when I did, you know, when I moved from one to the other, all right? So without further ado, let's actually begin our Pygame code. Uh, since this is the first video, I'll just teach you how to actually set up the Pygame window, all right? And set up a basic event system, all right? The next videos will actually be covering the majority of the content, all right? So the first thing we do is actually import Pygame. Then we make a second import here. And by the way, if you have not, uh, if you have not installed Pygame, make sure you do so from the command prompt. Okay. And now we call the pygame.init function. What this does is basically initializes your Pygame engine, all right? It's a compulsory line, all right? You cannot leave that out. The next thing we have to do is actually create the window, all right? This is the window on which we'll be drawing and updating it, all right? This is like our canvas in a sense. It's our drawing board on which we'll be drawing everything of our game, all right? All our sprites, all our shapes, whatever. Okay, so we'll call it display surface, which is a pretty common name for it, all right? And, or you know, we'll call it window, all right? That's, that's pretty simple. And pygame.display.setMode it takes a tuple, all right, that defines the size of the window, all right? So if I was separated a bit like this, this is basically what we're, what we're passing in, all right? Uh, this is the x, this is the width, all right, and this is the height. So we're just creating a simple 300 by 300 window, all right? All right, the next concept is, is actually a very, very important one. It's called the game loop. This is, again, not just a Pi game concept. It's actually a, gaming con a game development concept, all right? So think about this. When you create a game, it's basically infinite, right? If you were, if you're, if you don't press the exit button on the game, it basically runs infinitely. It only exits once it receives a prompt to exit. So we can't do something where we procedurally, you know, sequentially create the game, right? We can't do something like uh, over here, uh, player uh, movement, and here player attack, and then player. Uh, um, maybe the enemy counters, all right? We can't do that, right? So what we, need to, we need to, what we need is basically something that runs infinitely and something that loops continuously over the same code again and again, all right? So the best solution to this is actually a while loop. We create a while loop like this. This is the game loop. This is the loop that will continuously run over the, uh, our code 
and continuously updating, continuously checking for new inputs, new events, uh, you know, rerunning uh, our code. We, we basically create update functions, move functions, so all of that will be running in here. All our update functions, all our drawings will all be done in here because you actually need to redraw your sprites, redraw everything to the window. So this is basically where all of that will be happening. So the first thing we do in here is set up an event loop, all right? Basically, we need to start detecting events. All right, so what are events? Well, let's say you click a mouse, all right? You, cl you click the mouse on the window, on the Pygame window. That's an event. You click the keyboard. You cl click a keyboard key. That's an event. You, uh, you click the X button on the Pygame window. That's an event. We'll, we actually have a separate video on events. We'll cover this all in detail. Everything you see over here will be covered in detail later on. So don't worry if you don't understand it right now. In every single of our videos, uh, we actually explain everything from the basics, all right? So this is the event loop. For event in pygame.event.get. What this does is basically uh, event.get, it returns a list of all the currently occurring events in the game. So let's say that you simultaneously press the keyboard, uh, and then you press the mouse as well, and then you press something else as well, press maybe two or three keys, all right? So in here, all of those will appear. And let's say that later on, you'll learn how to do this. If you create custom, custom user-defined events, then they can show up here as well. So for now, though, we'll just define one event, all right? Not define an event. Actually, what we're doing is basically setting up a condition to catch this event, all right? And then perform uh, an action once we see it. So what I'm doing here is basically if, uh, if the event pygame.quit is occurring, then we will do pygame.quit. Okay, and this is where we actually make another import called sys and, you know, system, the system library in Python, and sys.exit. This ensures a clean exit from our pygame code, all right? Uh, let's just include a print statement here, shutting down Pygame. Okay, we're going to run this code in just a minute. There's just one more thing I want to do. Or one more, one more thing I need to do, actually. Pygame.display.update. This basically updates our window. It basically refreshes our window, all right? So you basically, you need to do this, all right? To actually push all your changes to the window. Now let's run this. Okay, hold on, slight mistake there. It, it's actually set underscore mode, all right? And there we go, here's our Pygame window, you see? It's roughly 300 by 300. And of course, there's nothing on it right now because we haven't drawn anything to it, we haven't done anything to it yet. We've only added a single catch statement for the quit event. And the quit event basically triggers once you click this X right here. So let's go ahead and do that. There you go, shutting down Pygame, all right? And it shuts down everything. Uh, if you don't include these two lines, you might run into problems while trying to close your Pygame window, all right? So make sure you include these, okay? All right, so there's just one more thing I want to discuss, all right? It's the FPS clock. It's actually the clock I like to call it the FPS clock though, because it controls the frames per second. Uh, so what is the need for something like this? Now, for those of you who don't know what frames are, what frames per second is, I'll explain all that right now. Now look, you see this while loop over here? Now, the problem is that it's gonna run indiscriminately. It's gonna run as many times as the computer can you know, allow it. The faster the computer, the faster it'll run. Now, while you're doing simple things like drawing or something, you won't, notice, you won't notice the problem that's caused by this. But once you actually begin creating a game which has synchronized elements, that has fixed moving patterns, then there will be a problem, a major problem that occurs. Now, the problem is that uh, the while loop can actually run millions of times within a second, all right? Like, even more than that, depending on how fast the computer is. So that's, so that's problem one, that you don't know how fast it'll run. Because depending on the computer that it's running on, it'll have a different result. So that's problem one. 
Problem two is that a million times a second is way too much, all right? That's like out of our control, all right? And that's a whole host of another, uh, another issues, right? So we need to tone it down a bit. Now, what we do is actually we call these frames, all right? The number of times it iterates over the entire game code, all right? This is the game code. The number of times this happens is called frames. So for instance, a very popular frame rate is actually 60 frames per second, all right? Uh, that's actually very commonly used in games nowadays. 30 or 60. 30 for slower paced games that don't need higher refresh rates and 60 for more higher paced games, all right? Like, uh, you know, shooter games. So 60 is actually really common. So let's go ahead and create this FPS clock. Pygame.time dot clock, okay, and then FPS clock, right at the bottom, all right, tick dot tick. So it's like a, the tick of a clock. It'll tick 60 times within a second. So there's basically the frame rate now is, uh, you know, 60 per second. So this while loop will run 60 times a second. So now you know that uh, your loop will execute you know, at this refresh rate. So you can now plan accordingly. All right, so the problem, like one co common problem is that player.move. Let's say you have, you have a function like this, all right, and you have a player object, and you want to move the player one pixel, all right, if a certain condition is being fulfilled. Now, uh, with 60 frames per second, you know that uh, within a single second, the player will move 60 pixels, all right? But if this was uncontrolled, right, uh, and you didn't have a FPS clock, you wouldn't know how fast the player would move, and this could cause a lot of problems, all right? So frame rate is an effective way of controlling your game, all right? So make sure to include it. And you'll commonly see this in our future tutorials as well, because this is just the beginning tutorial, all right? So I think that's actually enough for now. We'll expand more on these topics later, and you'll see these code, these, you know, I think there are about 10 lines of code here. You'll see these 10 lines of code in almost all of our videos, all right? These lines are, these, this base code over here is really important, so pay attention to it, and uh, in the next few videos, we'll be expanding on other concepts like user events and, you know, rects and collisions and actually drawing pr things to the Pygame window, all right? So be sure to check that out and make sure to subscribe because we'll be releasing a lot of content. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.